watching or listening Liam Hartry here today with another episode of Presenting Champions uh, today with a very very special guest Matt Diamond a very cool name as well I've got to say professional strongman who has competed in some uh, no pun intended massive competitions uh, including the UK strongest man three times Wales strongest man uh, placing uh, fifth third and first last year in 2021 uh, it's been competing for a number of years has some big plans for the future and today we're not only going to be talking about his strongman journey but also some inspirational aspects um, of his mentality for competition, how he trains and the dedication um, and really this story shows that you can come from any type of background and you can achieve something big, again no pun intended, in what you want to do in life. So um, that's enough of me talking about you in, in third person there mate. Um, <laughs> thank you thank you for coming on the show, I appreciate it a lot. Yeah, no problem at all. Brilliant. So. Going back a little bit into uh, your journey with uh, weightlifting, with strongman and everything like that, I, I don't always start at the beginning, but I think it, it's a good place to start today. Yeah. In terms of what first inspired you to um, to get into the sport and what your early inspiration was, basically. Um, for me, it was more, I was a rugby player. And it literally started, I tore my calf in a game of rugby and was told six months recovery. So at the time, basically, I was just training in the gym, just general sort of bodybuilding stuff. I uh, went to a local gym with my partner, and as I was there, there was a guy training for a novice strongman comp. Um, he was just using the dumbbells for one rep maxes and things. I asked if I could use them for basically a bodybuilding set, and he said, oh, because of how much I was lifting, I should give the, give the comp a go. Uh, something I, I've watched on TV here and there over the years, and I thought, it oh, sounds like fun. Um, so I went into Body Power, which I think was back in 2017. Um, I'd done my first novice comp, and I literally text my coach, quit rugby, and uh, I've done it full time since. Amazing! Oh, so it's pretty much sort of by chance in a way. Then that's uh, yeah, that's very cool. Um, how that came, but I like that. I like that. So um, in terms of your progression um, into competition and, and things like that, I mean you. From what you're describing there, you loved it from the beginning, um, which which is very cool. Was there like a transition that you went through where you started off thinking, you know, I'm I'm good at this, maybe as a hobby, to the mentality of actually I can take this far and I can win stuff and I can sort of go far with this. If you get what I mean, well, did you go yeah. through that sort of those sorts of phases? Um, yeah. So when I first started, the idea was my goal was if I could win Wales as strongest man, I'd be over the moon. I thought obviously I started at 27, so I started later than most people. The goal was one Wales' strongest man title, which I thought would take me five, six years to get. Um, and then like I said, if I'm lucky enough, maybe something else. But um, as the years went on, so I, I made a mistake. I stepped up into my first national comp after doing two novices um, and I placed fifth. So I couldn't really drop back down either. Um, and every year I've gone, I thought my goals have gone further and further because of how much I've progressed. And, I've exceeded my own goals. So I started off, win Wales the strongest man, I'll be happy with that. Right now, uh, my plan is to go to UKs again next year and podium. And before I retire, I do plan on winning that one. Um, and I do think I have got the ability to make it over to world's strongest man. Um, whether or not I give myself the time limit in order to podium or like, make it to the finals depends. Because at the moment, the goal is to retire around 36. Um, purely for the fact my kids are going to be at the age where they're going to want to start competing at sports and things. And there's no way I can put 100% attention to them if I'm still competing. So the idea is go as much as I can until I'm 36, um, set my world record in the log, and then that'll be me retired then. So if I can make it to Worlds, whether it's the finals or just the core final, I'll be ecstatic. Absolutely amazing. Yeah, that is, uh, that is cool to get into the future plans as well. Um, and uh, obviously... 
best of luck with that. I mean, I know you obviously put the work in, so I've got no doubt you'll do very well with that. And we'll talk about that a little bit more shortly. Um, before we do, just to highlight a little bit about some of your, your previous achievements as well, and just tell the stories there, I think people would uh, would love to hear about it. Um, in terms of, obviously, Wales Strongest Man, and just touching on that a little bit more um, than we have, you mentioned, obviously, you competed in that uh, several times, you know, fifth, third, and then, obviously, uh, first place. Um, particularly with the first place, I mean, just talk to us about, like, how that felt, you know, what went through your mind when, when you won it, or just... I don't have like a really narrow question about it, but just yeah, what the experience yeah. was like for you, basically. I mean, it must have been amazing. Um, basically, to be honest, it was it didn't really sink in for a couple of weeks, to be honest. Um, when I turned up to the comp, I hadn't been back in the sport very long, um, so I, I was expecting, you know, if I was lucky, top top half of the table. Um, especially after the first event, I, if if you watched on TV when it came on, I did absolutely awful at it. Um, and then it just everything else just seemed to go my way. So, but yeah, it was pretty surreal. I mean, even when I stood there holding the trophy, still couldn't quite grasp the feeling that I was Wales' strongest man. Um, but yeah, it took a few weeks to fully sink in before I was quite proud about going around and going, "Oh, I am the strongest man in Wales." Um, but obviously, I said with the strong man now. Obviously, there's two federations now with the Ultimates of the Giants. So obviously, that was another. Point. I say, obviously, if certain people don't believe Ultimates is the right federation. It's going to be Giants and vice versa. So, but it was, I think, it was a good few weeks after. And I actually, um, I think it was actually UK's sat down with Gavin Bilton and his wife. And I said, they said it's completely different federations. He's Wales' strongest man in one, I'm Wales' strongest man in the other. The only way to really find out who's the true one is when we finally get to compete against each other, which now hopefully will be the 30th of October this year. Is they've just announced the Giants Welsh is on the 30th of October. So, fingers crossed, we'll actually go against head to head and finally put a pin on who is Wales' strongest man. Amazing, absolutely amazing. That's, uh, yeah, very, very exciting. Um, and, you know, we'll talk a bit more about the future. The other thing, as well, that I think people would be really interested to know about is obviously the training because um, yeah. people who are in gyms and people who know about this sort of thing. You know they'll know a bit about it, but to a lot of people who just watch it on TV and things like that, you know they don't really know um, the dedication that goes in, and there's things about you know how much how much you guys eat, and there's yeah. you know, there's some there's some really cool things. So even though for you it's it's sort of your day to day thing, people will find it fascinating. So can you share with us a little bit about like your training regime, your diet, and just you know what you do to be as big and strong as you are, basically? Uh, yeah. So the diet is pretty much the same every day. Um, I set myself X amount of calories. So right now I'm on 5,000 calories a day. Um, that's because I'm trying to cut body weight. So I want to drop about 20, 25 kilos in body weight to make myself a little bit more agile when I'm running, which makes me quicker in the moving events. But normally when I'm on a maintenance diet, I'll eat anywhere up to 8,000 calories a day. Um, what I eat, I try to eat as clean as possible just because obviously you feel better if you're eating the nutrients. But as long as I hit my protein intake... I really, I don't care whether it comes from fats, carbs, whatever. So if I want a Chinese, I have a Chinese. Um, most of the time, I tend to try and get a good amount of fruit and veg in during the day as well. But uh, the diet tends to stay fairly regular. You know? um, we write a diet plan up every week, and it's just basic things you'd have at the home with the family, spaghetti bolognese, curries. Um, we have sausage and chips, lasagna, you know, just basic foods. Um, but yeah, with the training... Uh, I tend to train a bit differently to most people. So I design my own programs and I sort of mixed three styles of programming into one. So I've got a bit of the conjugate method. There's a bit of like how Eddie all used to train with the bodybuilding in there. So I tend to do a block of two days and a day's rest and a block of three days. Um, and I found that's helped me with things like UK. It's a three day event. And you know I got to day three this year and my energy levels were through the roof still whereas most people tend to do day on day off so you're used to competing for one day but bring them to day two and I said their energy levels are gone they don't seem to perform well so I tend to train weights five days a week and they're split between heavy and dynamic and then reverse the week after and I tend to try and get about five cardio sessions in a week so that could be anything from an hour long walk swimming uh, it might just be half hour of boxing and conditioning work uh, I try to mix that up so it doesn't get boring. And that's just obviously stay on top of the cardio level. So I try not to die during the moving events. 
Yeah, well, it's, uh, again, it's a really good insight into it because for some people, you know, it, it's sort of a mysterious world. Um, yeah, and so yeah. it, it sort of shines a light on that. And uh, obviously people who are really into fitness and weights, they'll know, but other people don't know. So it's, it's really good. Um, the other thing I, I think is, is overlooked as well is in order to, to compete like at the level you do and, and above, is what you're aiming for. I, I think you've got to have a good mental game as well. Like you've got to be positive, yeah. you've got to be, you know, things like that. So to touch on that, because I, I do feel in, in some sports it can be a bit overlooked sometimes. Um, do you like when you're preparing for a competition? What's sort of going through your mind on, on the build up to it? You know, do you sort of visualize it? Do you put it out of your mind? Um, yeah, just just what's going through your head really on the build up to a big one. So I tell you, I've, I've spoke to us about a lot of strong, to a lot of strong men. It's Everyone seems to have their own sort of thing. I tend to like to keep everything like really light-hearted, fun. So if you ever see us in the gym, until I actually go to pick the weight up, I tend to be laughing and joking. As soon as I go to pick the weight up, that's when I sort of visualise what I want to do. So like, if it's a heavy deadlift, I'll picture my competition lifting it before I've gone out, knowing that'll wind me up if I don't lift it and it's, it excites me up. But then as soon as I put that weight down, I'm done. I go straight back to being light-hearted. I said, laughing and joking, messing about. Um, again, when it comes to going to competitions, it's, it's a phrase that Eddie Hall used all the time. If you don't think you're going to win, there's not much point turning up. Um, if I turn up to a competition in my head and my heart, I believe I could win, assuming I don't make any mistakes. Um, like this year as well, now I made two massive mistakes. It cost me my title. Um, and again, don't put that down to anyone being better than me. They were better than me on the day. But I know if I perform the way I know I can without mistakes, I am adamant I'm pretty much unbeatable at most things. Yeah, I love that. I love that. Because do you know what's cool about it as well is as well as for sports, you know, there's lessons there that people can apply to life, if, if you get what yeah. I mean. So there's lessons like, you know, if there's other things people are aiming for, you know, if there's a job they want to do or there's something they want to get or whatever, you can apply that sort of bulletproof, unbeatable mindset to do that as well. And it's, it's yeah. quite a valuable, uh, quite a, quite a valuable lesson indeed. Um, the other thing, obviously, I think people will be interested to know is doing strongman. I mean, lifting the weights that you lift is it, it's absolutely insane, um, especially to a sort of average built guy like me. Or yeah. whatever. It's, it's crazy. Does it? What sort of toll does it take on your body, though? I mean, in terms of joints and in terms of like um, any pains and things that, that you get from from that, you know? Um, for me personally, so I tend to find. You're always in, it's not so much pain, but the what, what DOMS, so the, the soreness, that's pretty much always there. Um, personally, for me, I, um, I've i got very bad knees. I've actually lost 30% use of one of my legs. Um, and the training is the only thing that actually keeps me able to walk properly. So I tend to find that after a heavy leg session, my knees will sort of be very, very sore for a couple of days. But I tend to stay on top of ice treatments, things like that. Um, I happen to be very lucky. My partner is a sports massage therapist. So, I mean, I'm on the table two or three times a week. So I tend to find, the same with most people, if they tend to stay on top of their recovery, you know, doing their mobility work, stretching, you know, cold therapies, hot therapies, things like that, it's not too bad. I tend to find it's the people that go in the gym and they want to lift stupidly heavy every single session. Within a couple of months, they're the ones that tend to be, you know, they're struggling to walk on some days, you know, their shoulders aren't working, they've torn muscles, they've done more damage than good. Um, so as I said, as long as they're smart, they know when to have a deload week, they feel the same on top of the recovery. I, it's not too bad, but I'm still able to hold down a full-time job. Um, so I said, it's, it's not the end of the world for me. I said, it's, it's just a bit of muscle sore. And as soon as you start moving around, it goes. You know, if I sit down for more than five minutes, I, I'm getting up like a 90-year-old man again. So uh, it's one of those things I said, as long as I keep moving, doesn't affect me too badly it's just like i said for me it's personally just my knees which is again a medical condition so yeah with the recovery side of things i don't tend to struggle too much day to day luckily enough oh that's good it's good yeah but it makes sense i mean if you, if you do things the right way you know you, you get the right result it, it does make a lot of sense but it's yeah it's still good to highlight you know uh, for, for people who don't know another couple of things then i'm moving to another couple of things in terms of like the impact that you feel you've had um, on people with the sport and with what you've achieved, like the impact you've had on people in Wales, like inspiring people or you know people people watching you and things like that, it, it's sort of um it's a hard one to put into words because obviously it's sort of hard to to measure that. But yeah. I still feel that you know you have that 
that inspirational quality and um, achieving what you've achieved and sort of showing people um, that you, you know you can do all these things you can come from any background you can start from a late age which obviously you, you mentioned yeah. um, you can do these sorts of things and, and it, whether it's strongman or whether it's something else you can um, basically achieve your dream I know it sounds sort of cheesy or whatever yeah. but that, that type of thing it, it is true you know so how do you feel about like your like the impact you've had on, on like inspiring people or do you get like a lot of messages about that sort of thing or um, I get a few messages like people have seen me and they've, they've interested in trying the sport out but Anyone that gets any inspiration from seeing me do things, to be honest, it's, it's well worth it. I said, like I said, we don't do the sport for money. There is no money in the sport. You know, one message saying that I've inspired someone to try something new, or to be honest, that's enough for me. Um, I'm quite happy. Like I said, it's, you know, when you've, you've got a hard day, you've just finished competing, it's been boiling hot, and then they go, oh, you've got two hours worth of meet and greet. I mean, that for me is absolutely amazing. See the fans, they're coming in, they're so excited, and... And a lot of them, are like, I want to try and get into the sport. I think, you know, we've had a couple of people come to the gym and they've, you know, they asked to come down and see if they can do a session with me. I'm like, as long as I'm in the gym, I said, you crack on, jump in with my session. And it's, I said, it's, it's nice to give back as well. So the fact that people are coming down and saying that they've seen me try something and they want to try it, it's, it's quite overwhelming. I said, but it does make doing the sport worth worthwhile every day of the week. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's absolutely amazing. Um, that giving back quality and the same like I was saying it, it's a big part of why I do these in the first place obviously yeah. it does pass on that uh, that inspiration to uh, to a bigger audience um, so moving into into the last couple of things um, now another thing you mentioned earlier was you mentioned about like people training sort of the right way the wrong way different things you can yes, do yes yeah now talking about that in terms of um, you mentioned you get all these people saying you know I, I want to try strong man I want to do this in terms of advice that you would give people who do want to um, sort of try it and, and, and don't get me wrong I know there's some great coaches there's some great people but this you know when I put this out there it'll have quite a, a wide reach so I think it's a good opportunity to get any advice from you that might sort of filter down yeah. and, and, and help someone um, so someone comes to you they say okay I, I want to get into strongman I want to achieve something in the sport or um, even if it's if it's bigger than that you know lessons you can apply to life as well yeah so what would you say to people in, in that sort of um, situation and the same for anyone who's, who's watching this what would you say to them if they, if they want some advice from you, basically? Well, first thing I'd say is if it's starting out as a strong man, things like that, or I said any type of weightlifting, first thing, everyone says it's all about the diet, the right program. For me, it's finding a coach who specializes in technique. So, you know, nobody should be lifting heavy in my eyes for their first eight, even 12 weeks of lifting. They should be doing technique specific. So, you know, eight weeks of deadlifting. 60 kilo, kilograms when they might be able to lift 200. Um, reason being, I've seen so many times, they'll come in, they'll be able to lift that lightweight with perfect technique, and then they'll chuck extra weights on the bar, and then all of a sudden you're looking at them, and their technique's completely shot. Um, and that's where the injuries come in. They pick up an injury in the first 12 weeks, they never come back. Um, so for me, first of all, is technique. Once you've got your technique down and just said so, the reason I like the 8 to 12 weeks is because once you do something over and over and over, it becomes muscle memory. So no matter what weight is on that bar, you'll automatically just sit underneath it or pick it up with the technique you've just learned. Um, and it literally, it's, it takes a lot to break that form then. Once you've got that down, it's literally just, there's no such thing as the right program. Everybody's program works. You can train with me, uh, as any other coach in the world. You will get results from that as long as you follow the program and every coach most coaches for instance anyway know what they're doing they know how to program they know the loading phases deloading phases so it's not so much finding a good coach it's finding the right coach so it's finding one that you gel with so all the guys i train they're not class as clients i put us down um and if i've just literally put a post up i think it was yesterday the day before it's not Clients, it's a team. So basically, the idea is we all gel together. Everyone's on the same wave pens. We all support each other. So, in my eyes, a coach shouldn't just be there going, right, give me your money. Here's what I want you to do. Go away. You know, I'm there for my guys 24 hours a day. I do their video analysis. I said, if they need me down the gym, I get down the gym as soon as I can. You know, you need to find that balance between you and your coach where you're both comfortable and it works. Um, but like I said, first and foremost, it's get the technique down and then maybe look at 
finding someone that you can connect with on a good program then. Yeah, it's some good advice, it's solid advice, you know, uh, and obviously comes from good experience as well. So uh, I like that and it's valuable because um, it shares, you know, some of what you've done right, some of what you've seen people do wrong, you know, it, yeah. it's a mix of everything. So it's, it's you know, it's good. Um, so last couple of things then to, to talk about. You mentioned there about sort of coaching people and, and guiding other people and you said that um, obviously you're all quite equal and you all work together. So um, let's get an insight into how that does work. Is, is this sort of a group that you have of people who, who are training each other and giving each other um, tips or are you coaching them more more directly? or? Um, uh, so the... basically all of them are on a coaching plan with me. So they all have individual personalized coaching. So the way I work is... I send weekly plans out to them all. Each one is designed specifically for that person, their weak points of lifts and their specific goals. So I've got strong men. I've just signed a footballer who wants to get stronger and faster by using strongman kit. Um, I've just had a guy who's he's been watching strongman for decades. He's in his fifties. He wants to do his first strongman comp. So they all get their individual programs. Um, and then we're all in a WhatsApp group together. So we all have a bit of banter together, share videos. Share, um, but it could be a case of, I'll, I'll put a message out now, right? We're going down the gym at 10 o'clock Wednesday. If anyone can make it, we'll see it all down there. And then we'll all meet up. We'll all do the training program together. Even though we might be doing different exercises, we'll basically be there supporting each other, helping each other. So the idea is to make it more of a team atmosphere than just, oh, I pay someone to give me a program over line, you know? Uh, same way with competition. So um, my partner's one of the team. She's got a competition in two weeks. Um, I think out of our team, there's only one of them can't make it because he's not in the country, basically. So the idea is we all try and support each other as best as possible, you know, go into events together, things like that. I said, we are looking at doing monthly meetups where we go for a bite to eat in the evenings. So it's not just about training. It's about gelling as a team. And I said, even if they come off the coaching side of it, they stay part of the team because I said, they're all involved. Everyone gets on. And I said, it's a nice atmosphere. Then. Yeah, I love that. I absolutely love that. Like the team spirit and, you know, you're all helping each other, contributing to each other. It's, uh, it is fantastic as well. Um, and yeah, I mean, it also with people's perceptions as well. I mean, I know obviously in gyms, it, it, there can be that banter, but I think a lot of people see Strongman as being like more of a, a loneliness thing, like if they don't know the sport. Yeah. I mean, I, I've had I've had a few guys on here, so I know a little bit more how it is. But um, that sort of breaks down the perception of, of it being like that as well, which is, uh, which yeah. is pretty cool. Yeah, it's like the bonus of strong man. I find, but like, I've done it. I've gone like my first year. I I liked it. I was training on my own. My partner would come with me now and again, and then you turn it to a competition. It's a completely different atmosphere. Everyone thinks it's you know it's a lone sport, but you'll go out and do so. You're on the deadlift event, and the amount of times I've been out there. And I'm trying to, I'm deadlifting more than the guy who's just been, but that guy stood right next to me screaming at me to lift the weight. So yeah. it's very, very rare you meet someone that isn't supportive of their competition. You mm. know, you do get them, I'm not going to lie, you get it in every sport. But with Strongman, yes, it's, you know, I am Wales' the strongest man, it's not the team is. But my team and even my competitors are all there shouting for me to do better. So I said, even though it is a lone sport, it's one of those, it's a weird one where I said, you constantly feel like you have people around you supporting you. Um, like with the gym I'm in, I train at uh, Celtic Strength. I don't know if you've ever done a clinic. Yeah. Like you turn up there and the staff there are absolutely amazing. If you don't know what you're doing, the staff members come out, they're around you, cheering you on, teaching you technique. And then within a couple of weeks of that, you basically sort of fit it in with the group that's there. So like I said, we have like a morning, lunchtime and afternoon group that tend to always be around the same time. You tend to find, you tend to fit in. And they, as soon as they know who you are and everything, they'll stop their session if you're going for like a PB attempt and they come over and they cheer you on, they shout for you to lift the weight. You could be one of their biggest competitors, but they're still there shouting you to lift more. So it's, it's just yeah. that nice atmosphere there. Yeah, I love that. And I have um, a few people I've had on who, who do strong men and, uh, and strong women I've had on there as well, that they, they do say that that's, you know, there's that sort of community feel, which, uh, which I think is fantastic. So moving into really like the, the last sort of phase of this, you know, because we, we've talked about some good stuff. Yeah. Um, talking a little bit more about your future plans again, you know, I mean, I know you mentioned yes, about yes, October yes. and you mentioned about that. But in terms of getting ideas about like your, some of what you're aiming for, you've talked about the immediate term. Um, maybe we could talk a little bit about further ahead than that as well. Uh, or yeah. just 
you know, just what's driving you, um, and I know we have touched on it with, with, with earlier your goals, you want to retire by a certain age and, and everything, but getting into the concept of um, like what's driving you, you know, how you're going to obviously bounce back, because that's another thing, like you, you've had some big wins, but you've bounced back from yeah. some that didn't go to plan as well, and you're still driving for these, these, big, uh, these bigger competitions again. So just talk about the future, any way you want to talk about it, what's inspiring you, what you're aiming for. Um, so right now, um, my goals are win Wales, Giants Live Wales Strongest Man now in October, um, and that'll get me my big break to go into the Giants Live scene. Um, I'm also hoping to qualify for the OSG Worlds now in November. I've got the qualification competition on Sunday. Um, so hopefully I'll be at Worlds as the OSG Worlds in November. But other than that, my biggest thing is, I said, I want to win UK Strongest Man um, with Glenn Ross. I said, he's, he's backed me since day one. So I said, I will always compete at his competitions. I don't care how big Giants Live gets me or anything like that. It'll always be coming back to UKs. Um, but yeah, main goal overall, I would like to qualify and go over to World's Strongest Man. If I qualify to go over there, that's pretty much the top goal I've got at the moment for that. If I make the finals, that's just the cherry on top. Um, but the one thing I want to set uh, is the log world record. Um it's funny enough, I actually made a bet with um, one of the Lalas brothers at UK this year. He doesn't think I'll do it because I want to press 250 kilos above my head. Um, so, yeah, I got... The idea is stop fully competing at the end of my 35-year point and then spend a year just focusing on my overhead press and then go out with a big bang, press in 250 kilos above my head. Um, and then, like I said, I can focus on the kids then, but I do want to get into promoting as well. So right now I'm working on organising a UK Strongest Disabled Man. So they've just had Britain's Strongest Disabled. They've got the world's now. It's not much of a driving force. So my training partner is one of the disabled athletes. So I said to him, I said, well, why don't we sit down, look at bringing in another competition, but maybe look at trying to get it on TV, get some more sponsors involved. So it's not just bringing through the open athletes or the 105s, you know, the athletes you see on TV, it's bringing through the disabled classes, the women's classes and things like that, and really just trying to lift the sport as much as possible then. But I'll be able to do that while also focusing on my kids doing whatever. They said my eldest is into karate at the moment. The youngest, lucky enough, is only three, so she hasn't chosen a sport. Um, but yeah, that's my goals for the long-term future. I mean, I probably might dabble in the Wales' Strongest Man scene for a couple of years. But it won't be to really challenge the top eight. It'll just be, you know, show my face, keep my keep myself relevant in order to help with the promoting of the shows. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, there's some some rock solid plans there, and uh, it's amazing. And what you're saying about the disabled uh, athletes and, and helping them and doing your own show, absolutely amazing. But um, in terms of your own goals as well, um, absolutely fantastic. And I wish you uh, absolute best of luck with those as well. Thank, Thank you very much. much. Definitely be following the, uh, the journey from here. Um, and um, that's some really good stuff we've got into. And, you know, we've got into a nice mix of things as well, with, you know, the training, the competition, the different, the different things. So, um, yeah, when you're in World or when, when you're in one of these other big ones, we can do another one of these and sort of see yeah, how it's um, You know, and something like that. But um, in the meantime, mate, thank you very much for your time. And, you know, thank you for um, taking time out your evening to talk with me and everything. I no problem, my pleasure. It. Thank you very much for watching. Um, please subscribe to the Simply Inspired YouTube channel and there'll be more videos coming soon.